Hi, I'm Michael Cashew. And I'm Adi Cashew, and you're listening to The WAG Podcast. This podcast is about health, wellness, and personal development. Each episode is a short conversation between Adi and I on a single topic with actionable steps. We cover everything from food, mindset, fitness, and relationships. We started WAG because of the way health and fitness changed our lives, so we hope to share a tool or two that helps you along your way. What's up, Adi? What's up? You don't like what's up? <laughs> are you <laughs> just at me testing out? Me. Are you just testing out like new, new in instead instead of a what's up, oh, guys? In, in, in. <laughs> Can you even say it? If you're gonna if you're gonna dig on me, get it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's get into this, guys. We have a thrilling episode. It's on a relationship conflict resolution method. It is. The, it it maybe isn't thrilling, but if you it's actually it's great. It's use great. what we're about to talk about today, you can work through really tough conflicts with any relationship. Honestly, if you're willing to like with grace, with yeah, with grace, where sometimes like something that feels like it might be really hard to talk about, putting it into this format leads to sometimes humor and laughter. It dissipates the issue and makes it a little makes it so much easier. Take it seriously, guys, even though it could seem a little bit awkward and cheesy. One of the things that our friend Annie and mentor Annie has taught us over the years is that one of the biggest predictors of success in a relationship is how couples fight. And this is a way, this is just a Jedi trick to fight better. And calling it a, calling it a fight at using this method is maybe wrong because I think it leads to just really swift conflict resolution. I think it's, if you want to call it something else, it could be a way to express frustrations to make behavior change requests or to express a need. Like I ne- I want to express something that I need or I want to express my feelings in some capacity. And this is a way to do that to not lead to potential conflict. Um, you can also express a frustration, like something that you're mad about. Um, just using this framework can help you avoid people feeling misunderstood. It can help you avoid like bottling things up and then eventually get to a place where you're just yelling at each other or calling each other names or saying things that you regret or things that just like become unresolved. I, I know a lot of couples that have these things in their relationship that are just never resolved and just build up these resentments that if you just went through this this framework, you could at least gain a better understanding of one another. So this is called the Imago Dialogue. And originally we came across it when a D read the book, Getting the Love You Want. Getting the Love You Want. Which is Arvel Hendricks and one of the most sought after relationship books in the world. I think Oprah has had uh, Harvel on like 17 times. Yeah, it's her number one book on relationships. And that's like why, I mean, I am the biggest Oprah fan. Oprah, if you're listening. <laughs> Which she is. We I must, we must just am such a huge Oprah fan. And uh, when she said this is her favorite book on relationships of all time, I immediately bought it and I loved it. And we tr- she read about the Imago Dialogue. We tried it once when she read it. And then recently we did a two-day or three-day online seminar with the authors and we got to practice this a bunch more and we really saw the power of it. Mm -hmm. So basically the dialogue is a process for having a tough conversation that allows the person that is frustrated to feel understood, appreciated, and validated for what they are going through, what they're feeling. Yeah. It also allows both people to clear up any confusion that there is about the issue. So we'll go through what it's what the points are and then you'll be able to see when we use an example and also when we go through what we're talking about how there can be this clearing up of misunderstanding. And I think often conflict or disagreement comes from misunderstanding. Like you think I mean something but I actually mean something different. Mm-hmm. I think so. one one qualification to give before we go any further is that we look at fighting as a way to just get to know each other better. I grew up thinking that fighting should be avoided at all costs and that it was just a sign that you're in a shitty relationship. 
but but then I realized like everyone fights and everyone fights often. It's like the the difference in relationships is how quickly people move through it. Are they resolving things and growing? And so we really started to look at them as learning opportunities. And I think this dialogue can really drive that point home. Yeah. And when you say everyone fights, I'm sure there's people that are like, I don't fight with my relationship. It's not that everyone fights. It's disagreements happen naturally. We are all different people. We have different types of boundaries. And the closer you're getting to someone, you are bound to cross a boundary. That's like one of the barriers to entry of deepening a relationship with somebody is crossing boundaries. And if you're not actively fighting in the like traditional sense of the word, you are fighting in some other way. Like it's inside you that you're not expressing it or it's coming out as passive aggressive. It's happening somewhere. So we, our goal in our relationship is to have none of those. So the process is this, and this will not make any sense until we give an example, but it's to ask for an appointment, to affirm the other person, to express your need, frustration, or request, to mirror what you heard that person say, to summarize everything that you've heard that person say, and then finally to empathize using validation. And so why don't we just give our example and then we can break down each one of those further. Okay. So the example that we're going to give is I have this deck of cards called. An, well, why don't we just start uh, from the, the very beginning of that conversation that we had? You so lead it. So we were standing up in the kitchen and I told it the, it actually went exactly like this. I said, Hey, are you frustrated when I, when I, make fun of, or are you frustrated that I don't believe in the cards like you believe? Well, I was just going to explain what the cards are. Right. And now explain them. Oh, (laughs) you just (laughs) wanted to say that first. Well, I have a deck of cards that are called an Oracle deck, which is kind of like you ask a question, like, what do I need to hear right now? Or am I making the right decision with X, Y, Z? And then you spread the deck and then you pick a card and it gives you kind of like a horoscope where it tells you, um, check on the battery. It tells you kind of like an answer to your question. It doesn't necessarily give you an answer. It's it's general horoscope type information where you can make of that whatever you choose. And I've just been like really into it recently. I think it's cool. You ask a question and then it prompts you to do introspection based on which card that you choose and you make of it what you want, meaning like you already have the answer to your question inside you somewhere. And this card is just pointing in the direction of introspection. I don't know if I believe it if they, if they have real powers. I also also not sure. Maybe like sometimes I pull like really weird cards that are just so relevant to what I'm asking or so like so true or so like s- the words are the exact same of what I'm thinking that it's kind of just strange Mm -hmm. or I'll reshuffle the deck and I'll pick the same card that I just chose. It's a 44 card deck. The stats on choosing two cards in a row, the same are just really low. Mm -hmm. So maybe they do, it does have superpowers and in any way, I just think it's fun to play around with them. And Michael at the time was teasing me a little bit, like kind of feeling like it was silly or just not getting into it with me. And I just wanted him to play. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to play with me. And so we had some friends over the night before and I could, or or maybe just a couple hours earlier Mm -hmm. actually, and I could feel her frustration coming out. And so when everybody left, I asked her about it. So I actually skipped the appointment and the affirmation. So we'll, we'll go back to that after our example. And I, I asked her specifically about her frustration. And then what did you say? So I got an opportunity to express my frustration. So I got to say, I feel silly and sad when um, I want you to play with the cards with me and you don't take it seriously or you don't you're you kind of make fun of them how it how it comes across to me and then he gets the opportunity to mirror so that's me expressing my frustration so then I said so what I heard you say is and I repeated it back as best I could and then I said did I get all of that And then I get an opportunity to say yes or no. And what was interesting about this one is when Michael mirrored back to me, he said, what I'm hearing you say is that you get frustrated that I don't believe in the cards. And I actually got an opportunity to correct him because that isn't actually my frustration. So he's- This was where the whole issue lied. Yes. So when he mirrors to me, I 
what I'm hearing is that you're frustrated that I don't believe in the cards. And he says, did I get that? And I get the opportunity to say, that isn't quite what I'm frustrated about. And I got to explain that I'm really just frustrated that he's that he's not, he's kind of making me feel silly for even bringing the cards out or not making me feel silly. I'm feeling silly when I bring the cards out or kind of teasing about them. And I don't expect him to believe in the cards. I'm not even sure I believe in the cards. And once that was clarified, he got to mirror that back to me again. So this like express mirror, express mirror keeps going until there's nothing left to express. So Michael would then summarize what I just said saying, oh, okay, let me see if I got it this time. You're telling me that you're frustrated that I sometimes tease you about the cards or I don't take it seriously and it would feel better if you pl- if I just played with you and got excited about them like just was present with you and was playing with you and then I get to say yes like you got it that's what I'm trying to say and then Michael also this is key Michael gets the ch- opportunity to ask is there anything more and you want to keep asking is there anything more is there anything more so that the person who's expressing gets everything out because sometimes it's not just the surface frustration that's the problem there's like more underneath and the person who's expressing the frustration really has to take seriously getting everything out and there actually was more so when michael said is there more i got to say we've been talking about me leaning into being more feminine and more creative and more intuitive like not feminine female like feminine in that energy and making like I feel like this is in that realm of things so this frustration felt like mixed signals to me like I'm you're kind of making fun of it and you also want me to do more of it at the same time so I got to express that that was also kind of mixed signals and confusing to me and then you would mirror back to me that again so the mirroring the expressing the mirroring and the expressing and the asking like is there any more is there any more that can keep going back and forth and back and forth until finally the person who expresses says yes you've got all of it and the next and finally you empathize with the person expressing the frustration so then i really put myself, I tried to like put myself in her shoes and imagine what that would feel like so that I could genuinely say what I said, which was, yeah, that makes total sense why you would feel that way. Like you've been trying to lean into your femininity. You feel like what you're bringing is like even better for our relationship, but I'm sitting here sending you mixed signals that must be so frustrating and you must feel, you know, X, Y, and Z. And so I want to I want to explain a couple things that go on in the mirroring. What that makes me do, like knowing that I'm about to mirror you, it makes me listen in a different way. Mm-hmm. Like the whole conversation is not a it's not really a two way conversation. It's about making sure one person feels understood and for the other person to understand that first person. Mm-hmm. So I really have to listen rather than. Be, you know, trying to formulate my own strategy and defense while you're talking. And it makes me really hear you more clearly. And then second, the validation, it's kind of like maybe an apology or an affirmation, but maybe even further because I'm, I'm, I'm like really putting myself in your shoes and expressing what I think that would feel like which it seems like made you feel again, much more understood and validated for, and not, and like you weren't crazy for having those feelings. Yeah. I think what you're trying to synthesize about this type of dialogue is that one person, the person who's expressing the frustration gets the opportunity to get everything that they have out without their back and forth of like, I'm going to say what's frustrating me. And then the other person saying, well, I'm only doing it because of X, Y, Z. And then it ends up being back and forth. Like Michael has to pay attention to me the whole time in that conversation. And then once this conversation is over, he can have, he can express, he can be the one who expresses his frustration and needs. But in this particular case, it's about being understanding my perspective, understanding where I'm coming from, and then validating my feelings, which I'm sure many people have gotten into a fight where the other person just doesn't even like, Maybe they don't feel what you feel, but they can. Un- they don't say that they can even understand 
how you could feel that way. And it makes you kind of feel like you're crazy. Like, am I crazy for being upset about this? Does this person even care about me? It makes me feel so cared about. It makes me feel like you really heard me. And then you can have the opportunity to express your frustrations and all the attention can be on you so you can get all the way through to validation versus what usually happens in conflict where everyone's trying to protect themselves and everyone's trying to defend themselves. And then it's just like this back and forth, like, ah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Why are you smiling? Well, I thought I, it's a it's an inside joke so it doesn't make sense okay. on here but you said watermelon the other night and i was like watermelon back <laughs> marshmallow. <laughs> marshmallow. so actually you can just it does make sense on here so when one way that we've like incorporated some level of humor that they suggested in the seminar was that when you do feel some negativity or frustration towards your partner to have a code word so that you don't keep it in like in the moment so if Michael does something <laughs> that frustrates me, my word is marshmallow. And I'd just be like, marshmallow. And then he just the other day was like, marshmallow right back. <laughs> and it immediately. That was the only time that happened. <laughs> but it kind of makes you laugh anyways, which humor is a great way to cut through conflict. Okay. So I feel like I know that this can sound really confusing because even seeing it down on paper and going through it in the seminar like we did, it was still kind of confusing. So we're going to go through it again in detail. Like we're going to go through it line by line, but then also Google it, like Google Google Imago Imago Dialogue, dialogue, I-M-A-G-O, and we'll give you a call to action to go and practice this at the end. But here's how it goes again. Number one is ask for an appointment. Which and we didn't do in our example. What this allows you to do is basically make sure that the per- the other person has space for this right now. You're not just blurting this out and expecting them to drop everything that they're doing. Ask for, ask, is it a good time to have a conversation about X? Yes. Um, and if it's not, that person can say no and then make an appointment for, no, I don't have time right now, but let's discuss this over dinner tonight, something like that. So you can make a time that you know both of you can be 100% present to be there for this. Number two is to praise or affirm the other person. Again, we didn't do that that in this example, but basically like positive manipulation, kind of like the the feedback sandwich, mm-hmm. like give them a good one, then give them the critical feedback and give them another good one. So basically, I could have, I could have. No, it would have been me. You could have. It would have been me. Um, I would have said, hey, can I talk to you about um, something that's been frustrating me? Do you have time right now? You would have said yes. And then I would have said, first, I want to start by letting you know that I love you. And I really appreciate that you take the time to sit here and be present with me and listen to mm-hmm. listen to the things I have to say. And it could feel kind of silly doing it that way. Like both of you know you're only praising because you're about to have a tough conversation, but just do it anyway because it feels amazing. It reminds the other person that's about to receive the frustration. It reminds them that you're still in love, everything is safe, and it it can really help disarm that person. And it's important for the affirmation to be genuine mm-hmm. <laughs> don't just make up something that's not true because people can, people can feel <laughs> stop because <laughs> people can feel that so um yes so step two is to praise or affirm the other person and then the next is the start of the like meat of the dialogue uh person one who's expressing the frustration they express their frustration their complaint their behavior request or their need and then the next person says what I'm hearing you say is and they mirror X, Y, Z is th- did I get all of that? Person number one <clears throat> will say, yes, you got all that. And there is more or no, you've gotten all that. We're good. So then if you, if, if necessary, you can summarize. So what I'm hearing you say is, and then summarize everything that you heard them say. Yeah. The summary is important if there was, and is there more, and is there more? And there's been like a lot mm-hmm. that's been said. So if it's just one sentence, like, hey, I'm sad when you tease me because of these cards. If that was all that was said, where in this situation there was more, there was, you've asked me to be more feminine, I feel I'm getting mixed signals, all that, mm-hmm. then the summary is to summarize all of the frustrations and the needs that were requested to make sure, like, I now know that you get it. I know that there's nothing that I need to correct. I know that there's, you've, you've gotten it all. And then once you get to the end of the summary, 
and, and that person has expressed everything that they need, then it is the empathize and validate piece. So you would say something like, it really makes sense that you would feel that way. I would imagine you feel like X. And again, if after the person one hears that, if that is, or let me back up. Person two is validating. They say, I imagine you might feel like X. Did I, is that correct? Or did I get all of that? You could do the same thing you're doing in, in like the beginning of it with the validation. And then the person has the chance to say, yes, that's exactly how I feel. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And, um, and then at the end, the person one says, or no, person two says, thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. And person one says, thank you so much for listening. And I really like, even if you have to have this, cause you could Google Imago dialogue and I'm sure they'll have like the steps written out for you somewhere. You could, you could have this written out in front of you and literally look at the sheet. That's what we did. We went through this conflict. We looked at the sheet of paper and we're like, what step am I at? Yep. And what step are you at? And we just kind of followed it. And, and it's not, it's even now like not like a hundred percent ingrained perfectly, but we have used it in, in the, on the fly mm -hmm. a couple times. And it's been really helpful. Um, it might seem like kind of contrived to do it that way. The thing is it actually works. So <laughs> we wouldn't, tell you to do this if it didn't legitimately work it feels a little bit like that at the beginning but it's better than yelling at each other and it's better than not understanding each other and it's better than not having any structure to feel like understood and like the other person's actively listening to you and if anything it shows a commitment to your relationship to try some type of structured way of going through conflict and this is just a new language that you're learning and you will become more fluent the more you practice mm -hmm. So here's what we want you to do. If you're in a partnership, practice. And the way that you can do that is to uh, have your partner also listen to this. Maybe you listen to maybe you're listening to it together right now. And pick something that is mildly frustrating low or stakes. like a low stakes complaint that you have and you each do it and then each of you go through this dialogue and yeah. just see what happens. Something that is not going to be super emotionally charged so that when you're going through this, it doesn't end up completely derailing the process. Something that it's easy to just go back and forth through these steps. And then you can see how it feels to be mirrored and to be validated. And you'll it'll be a lot easier than getting like super emotionally triggered with something that's like really, really important. All right, guys, get out there and fight. <laughs> <laughs> and have a fight. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Stay in touch by signing up for our newsletter at workingagainstgravity.com or on Instagram at workingagainstgravity. And don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, leave us a five-star review, and refer a friend. We'll be back next week with another episode. Talk to you then.